they are revealing what they're going to do next. Uh, you want to go ahead and repost this. I got a couple things we're going to talk about uh, with what's happening right now. Uh, some of the things around Disney, what's taking place with the current administration Manchurian candidate, and what is going to transpire going towards this middle of the season narrative. Now, there's many things that are taking place regarding exposure, the lid coming off, uh, the, the covers being pulled back, so to speak, on what is happening around the world and you're seeing it also in the church right now. So many of the uh, purveying pretty, pretty pony preachers and many of the things that have been uh, brought to light, there's being a confrontation of some of this and a confrontation of sorts that will begin to push back against a narrative where people have tried to do something in one direction and the Lord's going to begin to redirect. Now, this is the opportunity for the red church to rise, meaning the blood bought, fire baptized believers that ain't backing up against the power as a darkness. And I believe this, the devil's trying to destroy America, trying to destroy America. And the confusion that's happening also is instead of fighting the darkness, we got a lot of idiots trying to fight other people in the body of Christ. And that's not the way this should go. We need to stand up and begin to push back as a united front against the darkness. I am so thrilled to be with you today. There's going to be so much strength. You want to repost this immediately, immediately. Listen, immediately. The temptation right now in this time is for many in the body of Christ to not only get discouraged, but to begin to look and turn on one another. Now, God deals with his church, the head of the church. You're seeing this in many different categories. Now, um, there's some major platforms out there. I know I don't know if you've seen the exposure that's going on with Hillsong, some of the exposure that's happening with Hillsong. And, you know, I have friends at Hillsong. I have friends that I communicate that were some of the, the main youth pastors for that organization. And I have nothing but love for these people. And yet you're seeing some of the leadership being brought out into the light because Jesus is the head of the church. He's the one that deals with these things. Now, this is really important. You begin to understand this. We've prophesied it. We've seen it. And here we are. We're seeing it begin to rapidly unfold. Judgment begins in the house of God, but it's not judgment with a, a death, lightning, destruction, and, 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 you know, and all the Old Testament narrative. There is a difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's Jesus who is Lord and he manifested. Now, you're going to begin to see so much more of this. You want to repost this immediately. I have an urgency in my spirit, an urgency in my heart, and I want to share this with you right now. Here's what also is taking place. What's going on on a national and a global level is the smokescreen. The symphony of distraction continues to march forward. And as it's doing so, here is the other thing you've got to begin to recognize is what is transpiring here is you're seeing the Manchurian candidate and all these people using every bit of smokescreen narrative they can to begin to push things back. And of course, the pretty, pretty pony, uh, uh, people who've preached pretty, pretty pony are on both sides of that aisle, different sides of the aisle, whether they're all about puppet shows and and uh, Tickle Me Jesus crowd, which is the, um, the seeker-friendly crowd, which has no regard for the power of the Holy Spirit. Or you have people way over on the other side of holiness where they're just off the rails, holiness and, and going bananas. Yeah, uh, people are talking about Hillsong on here now. First of all, I bless and I have nothing but blessing to speak over anybody. But I want to say this to you is what's going on with Hillsong is uh, there's a shaking going on and there's an uncovering of certain things that are happening uh, based on what I believe often happens. And and listen to this. What I think often happens is God gives a lot of seasons of time for people to begin to get their life in order. To, to He gives them opportunity to not only uh, clean up their act, but repent. And it's not about the individual as much as it is a protection of the body of Christ. And Jesus is the head of the church. And whenever we take it upon ourselves to go after leaders and, and say stuff that we really don't have the full information on, we are sowing into a future we don't want. So here's all I'm saying. We prophesy we know a part, we prophesy a part, and we begin to release it. Now, what's happening with Disney? Let's talk about Disney. Let's talk about the pervy mouse. The pervy mouse house is uh, going to have a lot of surprises coming for it. I'm prophesying to you today about Disney. Here's what's transpiring here. And I, I have a whole thing that began to come to me today as I was praying. And then in the news, you see what's happening around Disney. And so what's ta taking place there? Um, I'll even just, let me show you a quick article here, and then I'm going to go in, into what I believe the Lord is showing me about this. You're going to want to repost this. Okay, here is what's going on. They're talking about, um, 
of course, this is the, the smack herder on the world. That's highly entertaining, uh, the way that they deal with these things. If this had been anybody else who did this, like one of us, uh, there'd be like such harsh scenarios happening for people. And, uh, and it's like, oh, there he is. Oh, the Church of Scientology is embracing you, bro. Oh, I'm embracing you, bro. Love, nothing but love, nothing but love. Hey, sometimes you just got it. When somebody disagrees with you, you just smack them in the face. That's where it's at. Pow! That's what you got to do. And uh, it's just awful what's going on here. Now, listen, let's talk about the pervy house of mouse. When you're looking at some of these things that are unfolding, um, you, you got to realize there is an assault going on against our children more than anything else. And so you see this is hitting the news right now. There's a lot unfolding with this. I'm telling you, there's a lot more going on underneath the surface of this uh, the, than we realize. And I'm going to share what I'm seeing here in just a moment. You're going to want to repost this. So this miscalculation they're talking about, uh, there's a surprising message on what workers really think of Florida's parental rights law. This is a collision with light and darkness. And you're seeing this that's carrying on through uh, Governor DeSantis. And he began to say, hey, um, we're going to say you can't teach this mess to our young people. You can't teach this kind of pervy house of mouse perversion to our young people. We're not allowing it. You can't just do this in school. So what's going to happen here instead is they're going to turn this around and begin to uh, rise up. So I read another article. I'll talk to you about that in just a moment. Listen to this. Uh, you also see See this, a house divided. This is a prophetic word about what's going on in the highest office of the land. It's a house divided and there is a midterm crisis as we've been prophesying. And I believe extreme exposure is coming for the Manchurian candidate and all of his misdeeds and what's taking place in this battle in Ukraine is going to begin to backfire on the whole narrative. Now, here's what you and I have to recognize as well. In this picture with the, uh, like I said, we'll go back to the pervy house of mouse. Hey, we got a lot of, <laughs> we got a, like a pervy Kool-Aid stand going on here. Perversion for the next generation. Perversion is what they sell in the pretty, pretty pony preachers. Gather round and give them their money. Perversion because they think it's funny. No, okay. So here's what you're recognizing. Here's what you're recognizing. The main leaders in the pervy house have come together. They just put out an article. I should have had that prepared, but I'll just tell you. They put out an article, and what they're saying there is that they want to go ahead. And actually, we were going to go uh, to – I was going to – I've never taken my family there. Never taken my family to that place. Uh, we had a plan to do it. And I'm not just saying this. I felt strongly for a number of reasons, but I felt the Spirit of the Lord say to me, don't go. Don't go. I was like, Lord, I want to see the Millennium Falcon. I want to go see this stuff. And the Lord's like, nope, don't do it. I said, okay, I won't because I didn't want to – I didn't want to invest in that mess, okay? Now, this being said, here's what they've done. They've come together. They've come together and the leaders there are saying, it's time to begin to really bring out some lead characters in our productions that are far, far beyond any of the uh, persuasions that we've been pushing before. Meaning they're going to begin, you think that they begin to bring out characters that had uh, different influences before? They're going to bring out a whole new slew of this over the next year. And they're pushing it so dramatically as a response to what DeSantis came out and said, uh, we're not teaching this stuff in school. We're not doing that. We're not going to continue teaching our things in school uh, to the young people. We begin to uh, train them in the ways of the world. Now, then I began to have a, a spiritual connection to what's going on, a spiritual connection to what's going on. This whole fight that we're seeing is a battle. It's a battle over young minds. Now, uh, people, the, the native tongue of the uninspired, listen to me, the native tongue of the uninspired is criticism. In other words, if you don't have a word from God, if you don't have a real now word, but you want to be relevant, the best way forward is to criticize, is to criticize, criticize, criticize. Um, and if that's what you're building a foundation on, that's the wrong foundation to be on. That's part of the pretty, pretty pony gospel. That's the ones that say, I don't have a now word, so I'm going to do the spirit of criticism, which is not part of the 21 gift spectrum uh, that Jesus has called us to live by. As he is, so are we in this world. Now, what you're seeing 
And where this is going is an absolute train wreck for this next generation, okay? And the Lord began to minister something to me, and I need to speak about this right now. This is really important. I'm telling you, you want to repost this. You want to invite somebody to this because it's very serious what the Lord is saying. And I had such a stirring in my spirit over this, especially for the younger generation. I began to have just such a sense of um, responsibility, a sense to answer the fight inside. Because what's happening is the fight inside is being for lack of a better word, not answered for the young generation, but the fight inside for this generation, the, the, all the answers they don't have answers to, uh, uh, the fact that they all want mentors. This generation is looking for mentors. And many of you need to know this. The way you start reaching young people is you can't just parent your kids anymore. You need to also step in and parent other people's kids because they're looking for it. Parents have abandoned their children, okay? And in this generation, we've got to begin to step forward and begin to call these young people forward in their heart and mind. Now, the world through entertainment is putting a smoke screen and a false narrative that they're pretending to answer the fight inside. In other words, they're giving this young generation um, answers to a fight they didn't even know they had. So in other words, they're indoctrinating young people at a very young age saying, here's what's going on. You have an issue with your identity. You, wh- How do you identify? Let's start out with a two-year-old. How do you identify? Are you a turtle? Are you a stump? Are you a, are you a puddle? What are you? How, how do you identify? Let's really break it down. And of course, all the reasoning in a two-year-old and all their mental faculties are so wonderful that anything that you present to them, they're going to know. I mean, they can barely decide between vanilla and chocolate ice cream. They don't know. And the truth is, but they certainly must know what, uh, what uh, they identify as. And so what we've got going on is we see a weaponizing of the minds of the young. Why? Because this evil agenda that they don't even believe in from the top down, they know that if they weaponize the young, here's what you're going to begin to see. You're going to begin to see an army of weakness that is is shouting our rights, me, myself, and I, you don't understand what we need. And the truth is they don't understand what they need because when you take young people and you weaponize their hearts and minds with an ideology that they've never, they don't even understand they've been indoctrinated since they were kids. And it starts with the pervy house, right? And so through this and many other things like it, now through this, it's a biblical concept. And this comes to the point of where we recognize the fight at hand. And the answer is to answer the fight inside. So the church has not really done that because we've been so busy, so busy building platforms, building buildings, which I am so not against, but I'm very much for. But we got to get our priorities in order. The, the, The answers at hand are this, is that young people don't find any value in buildings. They don't find value in what's going on. And so what we do is we say, hey, go in there, watch a silly movie, have a puppet show, do this stuff. And we think the way we were reached as young people is the way we're going to reach these people in this generation, and it's not so. Now, what we've got to recognize is this, is the young people have been indoctrinated since they were young. I actually was with... um uh, Allie. And she's like, dad, here's a cartoon I used to like when I was a kid. I was like, oh yeah, let's watch it. And we started watching just some, you know, like, uh, uh just sci-fi cartoon and we're watching it. And I'm looking at it. I'm saying, wow, that's, this is really good. And all of a sudden I looked at it. I said, this is demonic. <laughs> this is demonic. She's like, oh, I know, I know, but I, I can recognize that. And of course, Allie's a mature believer. She's after Jesus, all this. But I, I said to myself, where was I when you watched this when you were younger? How, how did I allow this? How did I allow that? You know, and so you could go down the road of extreme, cut off every bit of thing, uh, you know, uh, you cut off every bit of entertainment that any kid has. That's not the way to go because then they're going to go seek it out for themselves eventually. But if you pull everything back from your young people, here's the other problem you'll have. You'll have like a homeschool group that the first time they see a color television, they're going to say, what is the pretty, pretty uh, uh, magic picture box? What's inside the pretty magic picture box? So what I would do with my kids, just so you understand this, I would take them to movies. I would take them to things, of course, within reason, you know, good films and whatnot. 
and even some that, that weren't perfect, but I would take them to him and I would give my own commentary as we watched it. I would mock the stupidity in films. And when we were done, I'd say, how did you feel about what you just saw? And I'd say, where is it right? And where is it wrong? And I would begin to train them to counter what's going on in the culture by their own free moral agency and their own free thinking. Now, what has happened is this weaponization this weaponization, and this is somebody who's very alert with their children, and I'm seeing things that came forward in my young kids, and uh, even as now that they're uh, young adults, and they're adults actually, I look at what they watch, and I thought, where was I? What What is this about? I didn't even know some of this was going on. I can't imagine what your children are seeing right now. So here's what I want to say about this, and I'm coming to a conclusion that's going to really benefit you, because we're seeing what's going on both at the House of, of Purvey, okay? And we're seeing what's going on around the nations. We're seeing what's going on with the smokescreen and symphony of distraction, and in addition to this, this, here is what the scripture teaches us about it. You need to really understand this. And I'm telling you, we need to be a united front against the darkness to win back our kids and stop attacking, stop attacking leaders that are trying to stand up and do what they're doing. God deals with his own house. You got to understand that Jesus is the head of the church, not any individual and not somebody with a new idea about how to be critical because the native tongue of the uninspired is always criticism. And it's the fastest way to, to do something but it has no longevity to it. Now listen, Romans, the book of Romans. Come on, when I used to teach Romans chapter eight in our Bible schools that we built, I would always play Eye of the Tiger. Dun, <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I'd be like, Romans chapter eight, baby. Now look here, Romans chapter eight. I've got the Thompson chain. Uh, this means we're gonna really learn something today. Hang in here with me for a moment. Check this out. Okay, Romans chapter eight, verse one. Verse one, let's see if I can... Um, Let's see if I can make sense of this for you. Romans chapter eight, verse one. Let me show you something raw. Let's look at the word of God together. Okay. Romans chapter eight and verse one. And here we're looking at this uh, down all the way to, let's start out into verse 20. It begins to say, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen. And it goes on to say, being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. Now, this is talking about all the people in the world and all this that need to know who Jesus is. And God is saying clearly through Paul that the world, creation itself, has attributes, and we know that God exists by just creation alone. We can understand this. Now, when you're looking at this, it says, verse 21, this is what we're seeing in a generation right now. Look at this. Look at this clearly with me. It's going to be important you see this. It says, because although they knew God, they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts. Futile in their thoughts, right? Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, now listen carefully, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. Verse 25, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Verse 26, for this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. What are vile passions? And the people are saying, oh, Jesus never said this. The Bible never said it. Well, let's just read what the Bible says. Verse 26, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. What could that be talking about? Verse 27, likewise also, the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of the error which was due. And even as they did not like, and here's the, here's the real understanding, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Very important. This is really important you hear this. God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. To do those things which are not fitting. Oh, yeah, it looks like I wrote something in the notes here. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, and it goes on. Here's the point. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, this is what you got to really understand. 
God gave them over to a debased mind. What are we talking about? When God gives people over to a debased mind, this is Romans chapter one I was in. Romans chapter one, and I read from verse 20 all the way to verse 28. From verse 20 to verse 28. So eight verses breaking down the plight of our generation. So here's what we're seeing. The fight inside is because the culture removed prayer from school, is trying to remove the thinking of God from a young generation's mind. And when this happens, now people always say uh, this immorality and specifically for the type of immorality we're seeing in the culture right now, God's going to judge that. He's going to judge this immorality. No, that's true. But listen, no. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says in Romans chapter 1, verse 28, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind. What did he give them over to in a debased mind? To do those things which are not fitting. Here's the shocking part of this. The immoral behavior that they consider, they tout as truth and they, they hold it up as righteousness for their own sake. They say, this is how it is. Uh, I identify as that. I, I can sleep with what I want to. You know, I could do whatever. I could go to bed with a rock if I want to, whatever, you know. And they go down this road. Here's what you recognize. The judgment is the fact that they have these impulses now. When they remove God from their thinking, the judgment is the behavior they're doing. It is the behavior they're doing. God, yes, at the end, all this, there'll be judgment against those who practice these things and do this. Yes, at the death and uh, when you come to eternal judgment. And as it talks about in Hebrews chapter six, the six doctrines of Christ. You know, a lot of people don't even know what I'm talking about when I say that. And that's, that's a travesty. The six doctrines of Christ get into so much here where you recognize one of it is eternal judgment, eternal judgment. Now, what am I saying? The reason we got to fight and we got to fight for the minds of our young people and fight for their heart and we got to fight for the truth is so we can begin to influence the fight inside. We got to begin to influence that fight inside. And when we do it, we will alter the judgment they're stepping into. And the judgment is looking at the darkness, the judgment according to the word of God. And if we're going to be biblical, because most people don't let the Bible get in the way of what they believe. If we're going to be biblical, you got to realize the perversion in the world is the judgment. It's a reprobate mind. It's a mind that says, I don't want God I don't want God. I want this pervy world. And when you do not have God and you do not have that conviction of the spirit in you through his word to stand against this, the outflow of that is to step into judgment, which is an embracing of perversion. So people that walk around saying, um, this is how it is. You know, this is how it's going to be. And they walk around uh, looking around saying, you can't judge me. You can't, I identify, blah, blah, blah. That is the judgment. Because they're, they're allowing corruption in their body. They're allowing corruption in their life. And so the way we deliver them is we got to begin to answer the fight inside. And herein lies the great deception and the exposure of the deception. The deception is we just need to make them laugh. We need to get them happy. We need to t uh, do a puppet show. We need to make things happen. No, this generation needs an encounter with the living God. And the pretty, pretty pony messages have been based only on a business model. They've been based only on self-preservation, trying to keep their institutional norms and values intact for self-preservation so they have the resources they need to go forward and never confront the generation. And the mistake so many people are making is they go and confront, they confront the body of Christ instead of confronting the darkness based on a generation that's in front of us. We need to snatch them out of darkness into the light and bring people out. So we get to answer the fight inside. How do we do it? By exposing them to the power of God. That's called going red. That's called breaking the off a generation, and we already know what they're doing. If you look at the small news, listen now, when you look at the small news, you can recognize that they are absolutely attempting to hijack, steal a generation, and ultimately, even in this present now word, what's taking place is they want to try to uh, hijack and mess up the midterm scenario. It's coming. 
It's coming, and I, whether we win or we lose this, I'm telling you, we are very much needed right now. You are needed right now. You're needed. Get criticism out of your heart. Get faith in your heart and begin to rescue those staggering off to the slaughter. Begin to call out on the name of the Lord. Begin to preach life and quit preaching death. Preach life to a generation. Every time I see a young people, I don't look at them and go, what's the matter with you? What's wrong with you? What's, what's wrong? I say, hey, I love you. I love you. Man, I understand you've been hurt. I understand you've been through all this. I've had so many, you'd be shocked at the kind of people I embrace in meetings and I've even had sit with me on the front row. People would criticize me over the fact that I've had some people that really were in another direction in their uh, uh, their lifestyle and persuasion, okay? And I sit them by me because I think that, I, that we are the only answer that brings them to the point, meaning you and I and people like us, we're the only answer standing between them and hell. And people are so worried about what things look like and what people dress like and all this stuff. And the only reason I have a, a, a code in our ministry is so we don't offend individuals on any side of the aisle for the sake of the gospel. That's the only reason I have any kind of code or whatever. But I'll tell you what, I don't care who comes to our meetings. I don't care what they dress like. I don't care what their uh, persuasion is. I don't care how they act or what they do or what they're going to get into. And I don't care what their systems are. I don't care what religious background they're from. I don't care if they identify as a stump. I don't care what they are. If they come to a meeting, I'm going to give every opportunity to not preach pretty, pretty pony to them. And pretty, pretty pony has to do with, you know, screaming and shouting down people the wrong way, leaders, whatever. That's pretty pony mess. The other side of it is pretty pony is the spineless, weak need, you know, jellyfish gospel that nobody's standing up for, you know, and, and I'll tell you what, it's time we start casting out some more demons around here. I need to get Pastor Locke on here. We'll talk about casting demons out. Haven't been in some uh, uh, messages or, or services where we cast out demons like, like his in a long time. I thoroughly enjoyed it. The church needs some serious deliverance going on, all right? Now, listen, the power of God is going to invade this generation. The only hope, the only hope this young generation has is an encounter with the living God, period. Because we can't argue them forward anymore. They're trying logic everywhere. You see guys like Ben Shapiro and, and all these other individuals that are standing up and trying to argue these people to win them this way. Here's the, the word. Listen. Arguing won't win it. Arguing does some good. It, it, it's, it's worth bringing an argument to some level, but it won't win the day. Until you answer the fight inside, until you answer the battle within them, arguments are just more intellectual collisions. It doesn't bring change. Change isn't real change until it's change on the inside. And that's why we need more deliverance ministry out there, casting out of demons. Now listen, the weaponizing of the young minds is the issue at hand. And here's why. Proverbs says the glory of young men is their strength meaning young ladies, young men, young people. The glory of young people is their strength. The glory of old men and young or older ladies is their gray hair. Let me explain. When the young begin to disregard and disdain the old, they're headed for rebellion and ultimately the removal of God from their thinking and they're headed for tragedy because they don't know who they are. And the, the response of the most of the older generation is to attack them. You wanna attack the individual, that's a mistake. We can't attack the individual. We need to love the individual. We need to embrace the individual. We need to wrap our arms around them. And even if they push back, like, who do you think you are? You'd be like someone who loves you, someone who deeply cares about you. Well, then you would, you would want my issues and my identity and all this stuff and all and say, you know, I don't even wanna talk about that right now. What I wanna talk about is, I think you're a good person. And I think you need, you need to absolutely find a greater reality and a greater truth. And I wanna introduce you to that. I wanna show you something that you have not heard before. You know, the, the knee jerk of the institution, the pretty, pretty pony gospel just wants to confront people in their sin. And we need to do that. We need to confront them with the gospel, with the gospel, with the power of God. Sinners, the problem is they're under deception. There's a veil over them. And the way we pierce that veil is by an encounter with the power of God. We pierce the veil by an encounter with the living God, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and all this. Now, the reason they're weaponizing this young generation is because these old monsters, these old, decrepit, nasty, pervy, globalist leaders uh, limping around, they can't fulfill their agenda without an army. 
And the only way they can do it is to weaponize a young generation that doesn't know better and they do it through entertainment. They do it through all these things first. And then the glory of the young men is their strength. Now they have a bunch of mindless drones who will run around and do what they're told by the weaponizing of the media. And this type of weaponizing makes them think that what they're pushing and what they're standing up for is their idea. And when a young person thinks it's their idea, oh, look out. Because they will fight you to the very face. They will fight you. They will push back against you. But when they recognize, this is not my idea. This was perpetrated on me since I was a kid. And you can get them to wake up. Now you've awo awakened the young lions. They're not woke. They're awake. You bring young lions to light. You bring young lions out of darkness. And the pretty, pretty pony gospel is going to have to give up to go up. In other words, they're going to have to let go of their institutional norms and values to begin to look at, it's going to take a lot more than uh, a couple songs, a couple hymns, and a couple amens and hallelujahs to win this generation. We are in a full tilt culture war, and we need to stop fighting amongst ourselves, and we need to go after this generation by bringing an encounter of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to bring an encounter of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll tell you what, I stand with any preacher that throws themselves into an audience and will minister to several thousand people at a pop, laying down their life. They might not be the best uh, you know, teacher on the planet, but they bring the power of God. One of those is Todd White. I stood with him in Brazil, and I watched him minister to thousands of people. I have video of it. He's out there giving his life for this. Uh, there's so many of these people that are, are, you know, standing up and doing what God's called them to do. I stand with all kinds of different uh, avenues and different people on different sides of the aisle. Because if they're preaching Jesus is Lord, if they're shouting Jesus Christ is Lord, and if something is found to not be accurate about their ministry, if something is found to not be right about where they are, here's what I want to say about all of it. If they're proclaiming Jesus as Lord, never forget, Jesus himself is the head of the church, and he is responsible for bringing order and clarity to these things. Do not get caught up in the misinformation of what's going on against leaders in the body. We have too much of a fight going on in the world right now, and God will uncover things that need to be uncovered. As I mentioned earlier in this, Hillsong is doing that right now. And I, and I believe it's so we can right-size and get the gospel out more and more and more. And now, man... It's time to rise and shine. So what do you do about it? What do you do? I'll tell you what you do. You not only begin to pray, you just begin to say, God, I repent of not standing up for this generation. I repent of not wanting to preach the gospel, but uh, all that. Don't have a critical spirit. Get out there and begin to love people. And you do it through the power of God. You do it for the power of God. Uh, you begin to, if you'll just stand in front of people and say, hey, I love you. And no matter what they do to you, what they do to you, it's going to be powerful. So you can win them over. Here's what I'm saying. It's time we begin to answer the fight inside for a generation. And all this pretty, pretty pony stuff on both sides of the aisle that's talking about criticism and this and that. And, you know, all this denominational nonsense. And nobody's ever going to agree. Do you understand that? Do you realize that the more we argue and the more we do this, nobody's ever going to agree. Nobody's agreed on everything perfectly for almost 2,000 years. That's why we have a denominizing of the nation. And it's the easiest thing in the world to go get critical and fall down that road. Don't participate in that mess. You need to participate in preaching the gospel and winning the lost at any cost and bringing the truth of Jesus to a generation. Got to do it. And what's going on with all this pervy stuff and entertainment and the government and all the wars and all this smoke screen that's going on? Keep your eyes on the small news because we're going to begin to see what's actually happening here and it's unfolding. Believe me, they're gearing up for another face diaper uh, run. They're gearing up for another Mark of the Beast precursor practice serum run. They're gearing up for all this stuff. And what is your response right now? Hey, you're a Christian. You're a believer in Jesus Christ, and if you're not, give your life to him here. Ask him to forgive you, repent of your sin, give your life to Jesus, get washed in the blood of the Lamb, go red. That's why we say go in red, because we're in the blood of Jesus, standing in the covenant of God. Here's what I want to say to you. If you give your life to Jesus in this broadcast, you need to tell us in this ministry. Contact us at josephz.com, and we're going to give you a bunch of free teaching that our partners make available called Saved, Rescued for a Purpose. I am burning for this generation. We're going to wake up the young lions. You know why? Because we're anointed for it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you because he's anointed you to preach the gospel to the poor, to set at liberty those who are in prison, to declare the favorable year of the Lord, to recovery of sight to the blind, to, to take them out of prison.
I'm telling you, we're going to begin to bring the gospel to a generation by confronting them with the power of God. We can't out-entertain the world. We can't out-entertain. We can't out-communicate the world. What we got to do is give this generation something the world can't give it. And that's the answer to the fight inside. And it is given by the power of God, not some argument. Because a man or woman from God, with a word from God, if you have a word from God, a man or woman with a revelation is never at the mercy of someone with an argument. Move in revelation, stand on the written word of God. Do not go beyond what is written. Read the whole New Testament, get your mind right, and watch God begin to use you for the benefit of this dying generation. This generation is lost unless you and I stand up for it. I'll tell you what, I've given my life for it. Given my life for it. And many people around us have. I want to also say this. Uh, there is an event going on at the Maybe Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. My friend Gene Bailey is going to be a part of it. My friend Mario Murillo is hosting it. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be Flashpoint Live April the 21st. We're going. And it's going to be awesome. If you can get there, you probably want to get there. It's Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mario Murillo is going to be doing some miracle meetings and all this. I'm going to be sitting down with Mario very soon, uh, uh, maybe even in the next day. And you can begin to... Uh, I'll watch that live broadcast. I have a lot of individuals that we're going to start uh, interviewing here. And uh, praise God, they're, they're world changers. So I encourage you to check that out. Uh, my friend Mario's putting that on. And uh, that's going to be April the 21st in Tulsa, Oklahoma at the Maybe Center. We're going. We're going to be a part of that. And they're going to do Flashpoint Live. And all the guys are going to be there. And I believe a shout is coming out of Tulsa. I feel a stir over Tulsa. There's a shout coming. So if you love this ministry or you love what God's doing here, I encourage you to partner today. If you are a partner, thank you so much. Please consider partnering by going to josephz.com. Text the keyword GIVE to 719-259-0029. We have so much we want to get after. We're, uh, we're just beginning to... Um, stand up for the, the Lord Jesus Christ, bring the word of God to a generation. And remember, any, a person with a revelation is not at the mercy of someone with an argument. Jesus is Lord. He's Lord. And we're going to make him Lord over all the earth. I love you guys very much. And I encourage you to partner today. We're all, we're, when I say we're getting closer to the airplane, we're starting to make phone calls now to the company. We're working that out. We uh, are approaching the point where we can actually put down some resources to, to secure it. And once we do, we got to really get after it, begin to uh, pay this thing off, pay it in full. And I think we can do it over the next year. We're going to set a deadline and a goal and try to make that happen. But we have to make the order first so we can do it. And like I said, it's going to be like a layaway program from Kmart. <laughs> anyway, praise God. Um, Love you so much. Thank you for partnering. Go to josephz.com. Sign up for our email list. Be a part of this. Subscribe to all the platforms. We are growing at an unprecedented rate. And I believe it's because God is pleased with the message we're preaching and helping people. And we're getting testimony after testimony every day of people having their breakthrough. On a bad day, you are the best there is. Jesus is Lord. I love you guys. I'll repost this right away. Share this with whoever you can. And I believe a lot is going to unfold from this. And I believe Jesus is going to be made Lord. We have a lot of events coming up ourselves. We have a lot of conferences we're planning, a lot of really exciting things. We're already talking about our New Year's Eve service this year. We're already getting ready for that, our annual conference. And where it's going to be, we're going to be doing different conferences around the nation. You better get ready because we're going to bring it. We're going to bring back some of the um, Voice of God weekends, uh, Prophecy Lives, and we're going to begin to do a number of conferences around the country uh, this, this coming year. And we're working on it right now. This ministry is in a state of transition uh, uh, going up and a lot's taking place. So please stay tuned. Go to josephz.com. Sign up for the email list. We're going to show you everything that we're doing very soon. It's going to be awesome. I love you guys. On a bad day, you're the best there is. Don't, don't let your emotions lie to you. Let's get out there and do this. And thank you for partnering. You see the information there, uh, the text to give number, and of course, josephz.com. Our partner, Care, would love to talk to you. And uh, we're going to stand together. I love you. Jesus is Lord. Repost us immediately. Somebody, I'm telling you, someone needs to hear what we said today. I love you. And I'll see you again tomorrow, 7 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Talk to you guys soon. God bless.